Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents Victor Herbert's stirring musical success, Rose of Algeria, starring Gordon McRae and his two singing guests for this evening, Lucille Norman and Jane Stewart Smith. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical evening is recreated for you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Mama Miller. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's story takes us across the troubled sands of North Africa, where Victor Herbert has set to music the glitter of moonlight on the tower of the minaret, the endless stretches of the Sahara. Crimson the minaret grows in the western glow, twilight in Barrakeesh falls. Why are the marketplace Stealing the throng below, clear there the mwes in calls. And while on high, the silver crescent wings unto his love, and As the blade of my scimitar king, staunch as the steel of the shield that I wear, is my love, O oh, Gulnair. Is the love that I give thee, Gulnair. And when my sword on the enemy's ring, when against my shield swift as arrow he wings, may they death to me bear. I fall to the eagle name. Who at the blade of my scimitar king, Staunch as the steel of the shield that I wear, Is my love, O oh, Gulnare, Is the love that I give to Gulnare. And when my sword on the enemy's rings, When gets my shield, swift his arrows he wings, you're a traitor, Captain Delone. Who calls me traitor? I do. You're a traitor to the uniform of a French colonial. The way you sing the music of the desert, I think you should be one of us. <laughs> You think I sing like a member of the Barakis tribe? You sing like a man who would die for the Sultana Zoradi. That barbarian. Why do you call her that? She's a savage, inciting the Barakis against the flag of France. Perhaps the Barakis consider you the savage, Captain Delome. Our tribe roamed free across these sands long before you came with your forts and guns. Well, it's a matter of viewpoint. Viewpoint and ammunition? Well, a philosopher... A little philosopher in the desert. What is your name? I'm called Miriam. Miriam. No. You should be named for a flower. A rose. Yes. You shall be my rose of the world. There's a song by that name. Of course. Written by the famous Elmo Crani. You astonish me, Captain. I never thought a Frenchman would admire the words of our desert poet. In all the Sultan's gardens are roses sweet and rare, and some are proud and royal, and some are soft and fair. In all the Sultan's gardens, no rose is blooming now, as 
as fragrant or as tender, as sweet and fair as thou. I have a message for you to take to your commander, the Governor General of Algeria. And what do you want me to tell him? That the sword is not the only way to strength. It is possible sometimes to win battles with a kiss. Hmm. Is that the way you plan to conquer me? We shall see, Captain Delone. Decorated, none more highly rated, highly rated. I've been celebrated, imitated, emulated, elevated sky high. It's been freely stated, freely stated in me. Concentrated, concentrated, are reincarnated. Caesar, Plato, Cyrus, Cato, fence my station hoist. He's been decorated, decorated, none more highly rated, highly rated. He's been celebrated, imitated, emulated, elevated, sky high. It's been freely stated, freely stated in me, concentrated, concentrated, are reincarnated. Caesar, Plato, Cyrus, Cato, then my station high. Decorated? Indeed. For what reason, I'd like to know. Oh, no reason, General. And I'm not referring to a military decoration, sir. I have just received the highest honor a man can receive from a beautiful woman. A kiss. <laughs> You're falling in love again. I think so. What a nephew. I bring you from the Paris boulevards to the wastes of North Africa to keep you from throwing your heart away on a worthless girl, and what happens? I throw my heart away on a worthless girl. Who is it this time? Ah, a rose. Ah. From the tribe of the Barakish. We're, we're practically at war with them. The Barakish are enemies of France. My heart never asks a girl her politics. I forbid you to see her. What? You are a soldier now. Forget your schoolboy rhymes. Make songs to the moon if you must, but not to the Barakish. the moon? No, that's been done. I know. I'll make a love song to uh, a cigarette. My cigarette sweet solace brings to me. My mystic mists are filled with fantasy. 
in the eye hole A necromancer's wand from leaden care Will sever every bond Thy incense mounts in swirling curves above And as I dream My fancy turns to love Light, please What? May I have a light? Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course Thank you I, uh, I don't believe we've met. We haven't. But I know a great deal about you, Captain. You're a Paris poet, a renegade rhymes to run off to the foreign wars. Well, I, I see you don't think much of me by reputation. I'm impressed by your opinions on love. Love, my dear lady, is as durable as an orchid, as constant as a gadfly, and as profitable as bankruptcy. In fact... Love is like a cigarette A cigarette may last as long Light it at a heart of flame For a time its fire is strong Fragrant clouds then from us veil Every sorrow, every doubt Till we wake at last to that our cigarette is out. I agree with you, Captain. My cigarette, thou art a magic key unto the lock that prisons memory. A touch from thee will open wide the door and ghost release of days that are no more. Bewitching shape, it sadly smiles at me with each I soar to love eternally. Love is like a cigarette, a cigarette may last as long. For a time its fire is strong Fragrant clouds then from us fill Every sorrow, every dawn Till we wake at last to find That a cigarette is on Tell me, mademoiselle, what brings you to this dreary outpost? I am a doctor. A doctor? If it comes to war with the better quiche, you'll be glad I'm here. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here already, doctor. Captain, come inside at once. Excuse me, my uncle is calling. Yes, Governor. Sit down, my boy. An astonishing development in our relations with the Barakis Pfeiffman. Well, does it concern me? <laughs> oh, oh, does it concern you? The Sultana of the Barakis has taken a vow that she will marry the poet who wrote that absurd song, Rose of the World. Uh, what's his name? El Mokrani. How did you know this? A letter from the Sultana. She will sign a treaty of friendship with us if we will deliver El Mokrani to be her husband. But no one knows who El Mokrani is. But you are a poet, my boy. You will pose as the author of Rose of the World. And marry the Sultana. For the glory of France. Clever, huh? Uncle, I have a confession to make. I am El Mokrani. Uh, you wrote Rose of the World? Yes. But it is intended for a lovely daughter of the tribe named Miriam. This is an affair of state. Captain Delome, I command you to marry the Sultana Zoradi. And I refuse, sir. Why, I've never even seen the Sultana. You'll be a traitor then? If I do as you command me, Governor, I would be a traitor to my heart. The dreary hours that pass and leave me sad and lone While the eye awaits my dearest one, my own When I thy song at morning, noon, or night hear For thee I long, the wood that thou Till the day, 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 the day
in the skies the stars of us My life, I love my life, my love. Those of the world are and holds thy tendrils twine over. In just a moment, we'll return for Act Two of Rose of Algeria. Say, Marvin, I've been thinking about that wonderful railroad safety record you've been talking about on the railroad hour. You know, when you told how there was only one passenger fatality last year for each two billion, four hundred million miles traveled by rail. Oh, I sure, Gordon. That was an important story because that railroad achievement in 1952 set an all-time record for passenger safety by any form of transportation. Yes, but here's something I've been wondering about. We were talking about that record at home the other night, and we couldn't remember hearing or reading about a single railroad train accident last year that caused a fatality. Well, you're right, Gordon. Not a single passenger fatality resulted from train accidents during 1952. The figure we've mentioned on this program took account of the regrettable fact that there were 14 passenger fatalities due to such unfortunate mishaps as passengers falling while attempting to board or alight from moving trains, or jumping or falling from moving trains. Oh, I see. But there wasn't one single fatality from a train accident. That's right. And you know, Gordon, that is truly a remarkable record, especially when you stop to think that last year passengers traveled approximately 34 billion miles on America's railroad trains. Wow, that's a lot of traveling. How many times do you suppose I could go back and forth from, say, Hollywood to New York on that kind of mileage? Oh, you could make about uh, six million round trips on that basis. <laughs> yes, and on that basis, I, I guess I know all I need to know about the safest way to travel, Marvin. Right, Gordon. Safety is the first rule of railroading. <laughs> Here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee dramatization of Victor Herbert's Rose of Algeria, starring Gordon MacRae and his guests, Lucille Norman and Jane Stewart Smith. My life, I love thee. I love thee till the day when from the sky the stars shall pass away. Miriam, my beloved. I am writing you this letter from military prison. The governor has confined me here because I refused to marry Zoradi, the sultana of the Barakish. Do you want to know why I refused? Because I love you, Miriam. You are my rose of the world, and someday, someday I'll take you across the sea to Paris, to the Paris of my youth, where there will be no more political intrigues, but only laughter and good times. The quarter Latin and Paris runs the boulevard known as Michel. Know it once, know it well from its spell. You will struggle in vain to be free. My thoughts ever back to it fly, and it's idle to hold them in. For the dearest street under the sky is the old moon me. Bonjour, me, me. Come dine with me. Henri and George and Antoinette. But first to the Café Pantheon For just one petit bear of anisette T'was thus it went In hours long spent Happy those days forever dawn When we dreamed of art on the gable meets And we all were twenty-one Bonjour, me, me Come dine with me 
A brilliant Georgian man to land On first to the cafe Pantheon For just one day's fair A band said Was the sit when In our slow spend Happy those days forever gone When we dreamed of art on the gay movies And we all were twenty-one You find it easy to sing, even in a prison cell Doctor, you can do me a favor See that this letter reaches the barracks girl called Miriam A love letter? Well, you might call it that But you told me that love is fleeting as a cigarette, gone in a moment of smoke on the desert wind. True, Doctor. Of all loves but one. Where am I to find you, Miriam? Do you know the back country? For two years, I was a doctor in the palace of the Barrakeesh. Wonderful. Then find my Miriam and deliver my letter. Your Highness, Dr. Madison, we meet again. But I asked to see the girl called Miriam. Miriam and the Sultana Zoradi are one and the same. Oh, then I have a letter for you, Sultana. Let me see it. From a man who does not even guess your high station among the Barrakeesh. Would he have written this letter if he knew I was a Sultana Zoradi? What does he say? called him a traitor once in jest. Now he may die as a traitor because he loves me. Dr. Madison, take me to the Governor General. Your treachery means war, Governor. What treachery? You have found the poet El Mokrani. You have him in your prison. And yet you refuse to bring him to me. I regret to tell you, Your Highness... The man who wrote Rose of the World is my nephew, but he is in love with a girl of the Barrakeesh tribe and swears he would rather die than marry the Sultana Zoradi. Such impudence, such insolence. Summon your nephew and see if he dares to repeat these words to the Sultana face to face. Sergeant, go to the guardhouse and bring Captain DeLome here immediately. It's no use, Governor. You needn't try to plead with me. I won't take the Sultana Zoradi as my bride. Perhaps you will change your mind when you meet her. Miriam, what are you doing here? How dare you address the Sultana on such familiar terms? You are the Sultana? The Sultana is Miriam? Uncle, I've changed my mind. Cable the foreign office. Advise the diplomatic corps. Marriage has been arranged. But which one are you marrying, Captain DeLome? The Sultana or Miriam? Neither and both. My bride is the rose of the world. Ah, dreary hours that pass and leave me sad and lone While the I await my dearest one, my own When I thy song at morning, noon, or night I long for oh, would that thou were near Thy song divine Has made me thine My life, my life, my life, my life, my love, 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 my love
Lucille Norman and Jane Stewart Smith will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Herb Butterfield and our entire company. Rose of Algeria with music by Victor Herbert and book and lyrics by Glenn McDonough was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? For weeks now, thousands of Railroad Hour listeners have been writing in for their free copies of Quiz on Railroads and Railroading published by the Association of American Railroads. Filled with photographs and interesting facts about America's railroads, this attractive and unusual booklet is one you'll want to get and keep. So if you haven't as yet written for your free copy, be sure to do so right away. Simply write to the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. That address again, the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. Thank you, Marvin. And now, folks, here again are our two charming guest stars, Lucille Norman and Jane Stewart Smith. Well, that was great fun, wasn't it, Gordon? I love these operators, Lucy, where everybody is really somebody else. Like I was Captain Delomey and Nell McCrony. And I was Miriam and the Sultana Zoradi. <laughs> and the Governor General was also my uncle. And... I got shortchanged. I was only one character. <laughs> <laughs> well, one character or not, Janie, it was good to have you swing aboard the show train. And next time, we promise you five names and ten wardrobe changes. <laughs> What's on the show train next Monday night, Gordon? Well, we'll be up in Central Park, Lucy. Mimi Benzel and I will be singing some of those wonderful Sigmund Romberg songs. And, uh, by the way, we're expecting you back two weeks from tonight for a special St. Patrick's Day frolic, Eileen. (laughs) And in weeks ahead, we have scheduled some really lovely operettas and musical plays. For instance, Lute Song, Sally, Chocolate Soldier, and many, many others. We'll be listening. Good night. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Lucille and Jane. You are both wonderful. All aboard. Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night, and Sigmund Romberg's up in Central Park. This is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. Rose of Algeria was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in the Technicolor production, The Desert Song. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Ferruccio Tagliavini on NBC.